Okay, so today what I'm gonna do is actually take you through the kind of one page commercial real estate plan that I used to do with private clients. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is I thought about actually giving away the videos that um, I recorded back when I was actually coaching, but there was a lot of kind of confidential and um, you know information and questions from clients that I just didn't think it'd be appropriate to to share. So I'm just going to re-record them and uh, share them with you here. Not all the tools are going to be available, but I think most of them will be just on my website, uh, which you can see. Maybe I should move this over at um, shanemalanson.com. Okay, so uh, this is going to be a little bit of a learning experience just with technology. So here it is, right? The one page commercial real estate plan. So today what we're going to go through, here's like the agenda. Uh, key concepts, so why would you even take time to create a one-page plan? Uh, defining some of your goals, FU number, beliefs around commercial real estate, uh, getting clear on the truth, which is really clarity on like where you are today and, where do you, and how you could potentially get to the vision or goal that you've got. Uh, I'm gonna also give you a plan in terms of like the roadmap to achieving that goal, uh, strategy and next steps. Okay, so really what I'm trying to help today with is getting really clear on what is your goal as it relates to investing. You could use this uh, process or framework for any goal. Uh, however, this is going to be specific to investing in commercial real estate. Okay. And we're going to also define the skills necessary to achieve your goal. All right. So what's holding you back and what skills and information do you need really to invest with confidence? So, by the end of this uh, video podcast, if you're listening to it there, uh, there's a couple of things that I'm, I'm hoping that you're gonna be able to walk away from uh, or walk away with. Number one, know what type of investor you are. Uh, are you looking to make money, grow money, or keep money? Those are generally the three types of investors that I, I've worked with. Uh, number two, what asset class are you gonna invest in? Multi, industrial, retail, office, self-storage. Where are you going to invest? What city? How big, how big of a deal are you going to do? How many doors? How many square feet? How much money are you, you going to invest? And then what is your deal structure, right? Is it going to be a solo, uh, like doing it yourself, or are you going to have partners, right? Okay, so uh, I heard this on a podcast, and I think the guy's name was David Stein, but I can't remember for sure. It was a little while back, and he just talked about and broke down the investing landscape in probably the best way that I've ever seen it. And so you've really got public markets and private markets. Public markets being stocks, bonds, REITs, right? And so if, if you're watching this, it's a lot more, it's gonna be a lot more um, helpful than just to listen to it. But uh, so you can go to YouTube and, and watch this later. However, I'll do my best to describe it, right? So you have your public markets, which like I mentioned, stocks, bonds, and REITs. And then you have private markets, right? So the equivalent of a stock in the private market would be private equity, right? Private companies, venture capital. Uh, and then you've got, uh, instead of bonds, you've got mix or private debt. And then instead of REITs, which are public, you have uh, essentially private real estate uh, investment trusts, uh, as well as syndications, okay? Or just investing on your own, right? So that would be kind of the, the landscape. And really, all I'm talking about today, because I'm not qualified to talk about public markets, and I'm really not qualified to talk about uh, private equity or public debt, I mean, or private debt, uh, I, I, I'm aware of them, but I'm really not, um, I'm not going to focus on them whatsoever. So really, all we're talking about is private real estate syndications, okay? That's it. Or investing on your own. So the premise, if you will, is that, and this is a belief that I have, and that is that even once you go through this and you design your first plan, the most successful investors I know uh, and people that like, I'll give you one example. So there's a family individual here in Calgary and they were specialists in industrial uh, build a suit. And they probably did that for over 20, 25, maybe even 30 years. And uh, they have, they're not uh, ignoring that, but I would say 50% of the new projects that they do are in multifamily. And so why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this because markets change, uh, tenants change, uh, COVID happens, research, like all these, 
like we're not in a static environment and so because you design a plan doesn't mean that plan needs to uh, be written in stone i would say just have some flexibility to to pivot and change as the market changes right so we'll just kind of leave it at that now here are what i would consider to be some of the biggest mistakes i see for new investors to commercial real estate um Targeting too many, and I'm going to just mention this. The reason I know this is because I've probably made uh, all of these mistakes. And so I'm just sharing from experience. So the biggest mistakes, targeting too many different types of properties, uh, chasing every deal that is sent to you, buying on price versus value, uh, being a generalist, not really understanding your market, asset class, rents, demand, not seeing enough deals. I mean, this is probably the biggest thing. Um, a lot of when I was coaching, I'm not doing that right now. I would say that, you know, the majority of clients that I was working with, they might see one or two deals and they would think that it was a great deal because they had no perspective, right? They had not seen 50, 100, 5,000 deals to know, yeah, this is an amazing deal or this is just an average crap deal. Um, thinking every deal is a forever deal. Um, I have made this mistake, meaning that you buy it and you hold it for 10 years and really you should have just bought it, the added value flipped out of it, not flipped, but sold. Um, maybe taking too short of a perspective on a deal, right? What is like in commercial real estate, generally speaking, it's it's not liquid like a, a stock, right? So you can't get in and get out. Uh, and then the last and the last one here was is neediness, feeling like you need to do a deal, um, getting pressured by brokers, pressured by you know your coach or whoever you're working with, investors. And what I can say is you really. You know, you, you have to eliminate that and just take a, a, you know, just do the inverse of all these. And, you know, so instead of targeting too many different properties, you focus. Instead of chasing, once again, focus. Instead of buying on price, you buy on value. Uh, instead of being a generalist, you're a specialist. Instead of not seeing enough deals, you, you want to see, obviously, more uh, deal flow um, and, and so on. Okay, so here are some of the key concepts. And... This is something that I read somewhere. I don't even know where. Like a lot of this is just from research that I've done. And the concept was they took 100 entrepreneurs where 50 had a solid, well thought out business plan, and they had 50 that basically had notes and ideas on their business. And four years later, after following them around, the 50 that had well written out business plans, 49 were still in business. Of the 50 without a business plan, 12 were in business. So you know, as investors, entrepreneurs, I would say that we have a bias to taking action. But I think the, the key is to really take time to think. And even if the plan turns out to be garbage, it is still better than going in with, um, with no plan. Okay. Now, um, if you're looking at this, then, then essentially what, what this slide says is, the quality of your thinking is going to lead to the quality of your decisions. The quality of your decisions will lead to the quality of your actions, and that will lead to the quality of your results, okay? And so I'm just, once again, just trying to uh, sell you on the idea of taking the time to really think and plan this out, okay? And um, yeah, I'm going to skip through this. So here is kind of the commercial real estate investing roadmap. And so if you're looking at the slide, you've got on the far left, you've got the starting point, which is point A, and then the very you know, on the far right, you've got uh, point B, which is your goal, right? And in between that, you've got obstacles preventing you from getting from where you're at to where you want to get to. And so you've got, you know, obviously the foundation, which is kind of what we're going to talk about today. And then over some of the next videos that I release, we'll talk about how to find deals, how to finance them and how to fix them really, because that's um, the the map, right? And so this is this is something I believe it's on my website. And you can just kind of see, you know, you go from essentially getting clarity, discovering where you're at, then you get into property selection. We'll talk a little bit about that today. Uh, you know, debt, raising capital, uh, equity, that is something in the future. And then implementation optimization is um, kind of towards the end. So what I would say is, I mean, if you're driving, don't do this. You could think about it. If you're watching this, then I would take out a piece of paper and just write it down. Like in terms of, you know, what's the one thing you want to take away from this video? Obviously, this was when I was coaching. And so it would be a live call and just jot it down, right? Like in terms of like, what is your goal? And so 
In my experience, there are kind of three big buckets for investing, making money, growing money, keeping money. And as it relates to um, how you would identify in terms of where you would be in the in the make money, grow money, keep money, this is for a lot of the people that I've worked with and, and just in terms of what feedback they gave me, right? I wasn't putting them in these buckets. They, they kind of uh, explained it. They, they basically shared it with me, right? So if they had less than a million dollars of investable assets, and what I mean by investable assets is like not net worth with your house and your cars and whatnot. This is really like essentially liquid cash that you have in your bank. Um, so this would be, uh, you know, less than a million. They're generally focused on making money, right? If they had between one and five million, they were looking at growing their money. And then if they had five to 20 to 50 million, they really focused on uh, keeping their money. They did not want to lose money. Okay. So just for clarity, I am in the make money, although, yeah, so I'm in the make money and I am in the business of commercial real estate. So I do development and I do construction. Okay. So that's just where my focus is. Uh, but I would say a lot of the partners that uh, come into my projects, they are in uh, the keep and grow money and uh, they just don't have the same level of time and, and energy. Like I, I mean, even when I hit 20, 50, 100 million, I will likely still be making money, but I'll be focused less on growing it and more on keeping it. But that's, you know, a topic for another uh, day. So here are a few financial goals and examples of people that have shared with me what, what they wanted, right? The first 120,000 a year, I want $10,000 in passive cash flow every month. I want 5 million in assets. I want $250,000 in fees from commercial real estate. Okay, so these are just different examples of what possible investing goals could be, right? And then this one page plan, I believe it's on my website at shanemalanson.com. If you click on the resources tab, uh, you can go and, and find this. But essentially, we're just gonna focus on uh, probably just the top here today, okay? And we're not gonna do that. All right, so the truth, essentially, where are you starting? And when I talk about point A or the truth, really what I would say is, um, if you've got, uh, like this exercise here is like an Excel spreadsheet. However, you could literally do this on a piece of paper where you list your assets, you list your liabilities, so you figure out kind of what your personal net worth is figuring out what your burn rate is. This is essentially just taking a budget, right? Like what are your monthly expenses? What's your monthly income? And then the difference is obviously what you could save, right? And so I'm just going to take the, uh, or make the assumption that you've got access to half a million dollars to invest. And then what is your target, right? So how much passive, when I say passive, it's not fully passive in the sense that you do nothing. Uh, however, if you don't show up for work, uh, like some of the some of the real estate that I own, like it pays me if I'm on vacation or if I am working, right? Like that's the idea of owning these assets is that they pay you and you don't have to trade time, right? So what is that target for you? It could be ten thousand a month, uh, it could be twenty thousand a month, it could be fifty thousand a month, it could be based on security, comfort, legacy. I mean, these are all uh, personal decisions. And I should mention, none of this is investing advice. This is just tools that I've created for myself and then I shared with people. And if it helps you, then wonderful. And if it doesn't help, then just skip to something that does. Um, I think it's also important to have like proper investing expectations. I know when I initially started uh, mentoring and coaching, a few people that I would have conversations with because they were into speculating. And when I say speculating, I would consider like you know, pre-construction condos as uh, highly speculative because you're really just banking on the fact that it's just going to be worth more into the future. There's generally no cash flow and you're doing nothing to add value, right? You've just taken action and I'm not suggesting that you can't make money doing it, uh, but it is highly speculative in, in, my, in my opinion. Anyways, I would have these conversations and a lot of these investors were looking for like 50 to 100 act, like, like, 50% to 100%. So basically they wanted to like, you know, if they put in $100, they wanted to get 150 back or 200. Uh, and and frankly, in a lot of the projects that I look at, you know, eight to 12% or 15% is, uh, is kind of more realistic, okay? So just figuring out what are your investing expectations because those expectations are then going to guide you in terms of the type of assets that you're gonna be looking at. 
Um, and then this is just another, uh, you know, kind of question in terms of like how much money can you invest right now? Uh, this is a tool, the FU calculator that I've, I've, um, given to some of my clients. So I don't think it's on my, on my shanemalanson.com. However, you can just do the, the simple, it not simple, but it's, it's really just a calculation on how much time do you have? How much capital do, ha do you have to invest? And what are the returns that you're looking for? Right. And you can compound those returns or you can just have, um, essentially simple interest in terms of whatever returns you're going to have. So this is kind of what the tool looks like in terms of, so, you know, you start off in this example, you're 40, you want to retire. I just use that as the, as the, you know, you don't want to work anymore, uh, at 55. So you have 15 years. Okay. You've got half a million dollars. You can, you can basically put $2,000 a month. You think that you're going to get a 10% return. The retirement amount is 2.85 million. Uh, and if you're earning 6% on that, when you let's call it retire, you'd be getting 171,000. None of this takes into consideration taxes. Uh, that's not the purpose of this tool. This purpose was just to essentially give some clarity in terms of what's possible in terms of different return expectations, savings, how much time, like I said, like these are kind of the, uh, the variables, right? The other thing is you could work backwards and say, you know what? I have half a million. Uh, the amount that I want is 10,000 a month. I think I'm going to get an 8% return. It means I need 1.5 million. And so you can just kind of see, you know, here you'd only be required to invest a little more than a thousand dollars a month. If you're listening to this on the podcast, it probably doesn't make a lot of sense. You'd really want to look at this on, um, on the video. Okay. So jumping into the next phase, the plan, and just so you know, uh, if you're listening or watching this, generally I'm doing this and there's a lot of feedback. So this is a little different in the sense that I am recording this with no, and I got to make sure that this thing is recording. Yeah, it looks like it is. Okay. Uh, so, so it is a little bit odd uh, to just be speaking directly into the microphone and with no feedback because I'm used to getting questions. Hopefully I'm answering a lot of these questions. So in terms of the one page plan, you know, we've kind of got clarity on where you're at, what the truth is, what your vision is, what the goal is. And then the next part of it is like, where do you want to invest? What cities, what neighborhoods? And what I would say is like reverse engineering your goals based on your clarity, your clear vision, where you're at today, what's holding you back, some of those obstacles, and then, um, and then identifying how you're going to go from point A to point B is essentially where we're going to go next, right? So I generally ask anybody I'm working with to identify the resources that they have. How much time do you have? How much capital do you have? How much knowledge do you have? What are your resources and what are your strengths and weaknesses, right? And each one of those questions you can rank on a scale of one being low and 10 being, you know, you're an expert, right? So if you're like, I, I've, I'll give you an example. If I'm working with an engineer or a doctor, generally their time is like a one or two, like they very, they don't have very much time at all, but their capital could be like a seven, eight, nine, or 10. Their knowledge might be a three or four and their resources uh, in terms of maybe relationships, uh, might be two or three, right? And so then we figure out what's the priority, right? In terms of, you know, they're probably not going to create more time. Uh, capital is what it is. Knowledge and resources are usually where they can, uh, in, in most, in most cases, put, put some effort in to a increase their knowledge, right? If you're watching this video, that is obviously a way for you to increase your knowledge and then resources going out, you know, whether it's a coach, whether it's reading a book, whether it's talking to someone that has access to deal flow, these are all going to help you, right? So we already talked about that, taking inventory, right? So I think I've already kind of mentioned this. I don't really need to go through it again. The next question I generally ask, and this was uh, really, I think, helpful for a lot of people that I've, I've and, and helpful for myself too. So answering the question, what type of investor are you? right? Are you an active or passive investor? Right? First question. And are you going to be solo or are you going to raise capital? Right? And so you can be active and raise capital um, or active or solo. Passive, you're unlikely to be solo. You're, you're, you know, if you're a passive investor, you're investing with people that are raising capital. Okay. Uh, just to delineate, you know, passive is you're really focused on finding deals. You need to find the right people. 
You want to have a clear, easy path to converting your money into cash flow. And your time is better spent on making money than on finding deals. Okay, that's generally uh, my experience on this. Active, you're really focused because you want more control. Um, you, you may want to make money, not just invest. You have the time to find the deals, right? Uh, you want to see your, your likely long-term perspective is because you're doing this not just for today, but for the next 5, 10, 15 years. And um, I would say that those are kind of the, you know, how you might identify whether you're passive or active, okay? The next is what is the actual strategy, right? Like the how-to, okay? And I generally start off with like, what is your investing philosophy? And your philosophy is like, what are your beliefs around investing? And uh, we're, I'm not going to get into that. That's more of a conversation that you would have with someone. But I think you can start to like just map out what it is that you believe, right? I have some people that believe in multifamily or believe in office or believe in value add. Uh, and, and you would just want to question why you have those beliefs and are they serving you? Yes or no. Something that I really focus on, and this is what I would say is probably something that uh, might be taken for granted, and that is like when when I'm investing, I am hyper focused on investing where there is more demand than supply. I like to be in high growth markets, and generally that's going to come from research and understanding the market that you're in. This is a framework I've used uh, for. A lot of my clients in terms of like you know the five ones which is like really understanding the market timing you know focusing on one city to research uh picking two to three neighborhoods one asset class and then obviously the price is really more based on price per square foot price per door like you want to have like the more clear you are on this framework here the five ones the better you're going to be able to say yes or no quickly and um, when you're when presented a deal, you'll know where to focus your energy. Because I can say from experience, if you've got, let's say, three cities that you're focused on, retail, industrial, and multifamily, uh, in terms of asset classes, you haven't even picked a neighborhood, and you might be 1 million to 30 million, boy, I tell you, you're gonna see a lot of deal flow and it's gonna suck up a lot of energy and effort. So the more refined you can be uh, within reason, the better you're gonna be able to make those decisions. So just kind of breaking down this, this strategy, I think I've already kind of talked about this. So market timing, you know, understanding where you are, right? In terms of the market cycle, uh, picking a city, we've already talked about that. I would say if you're, you're not uh, looking at this, you're listening, you know, I like to invest in cities that are pro-business, high job growth, high standard of living, uh, neighborhoods. The simple thing I talk about is following where the money is. I like to be in locations where money is already flowing. Uh, the type of property or asset, what is in demand, right? And price, what can you pay for the property? There's really no point in looking at $20 million deals if you're going to tap out on financing on a $5 million prop property. Here is just the market cycle. This is a good resource that you can go to um, daniel.du.edu burn school. And there's just the three markets, phase one recovery, phase two expansion, phase three hyper supply, phase four recession. These are some of my non-negotiables in terms of how I make decisions. Uh, I wouldn't say that you just copy these, but maybe think about for yourself. So for me, is the deal big enough? Is it in a desirable location? Do I understand it? Does it fit my core competency? Is the property functional, right? So for example, there's a lot of uh, office buildings right now that are not functional in my opinion. Uh, people are converting them, so I'm really curious to see how those uh, play out. Uh, leverage, how much leverage? Not too much, uh, but you certainly want to be able to put some debt on, at least for me, I want to be able to put debt on. Uh, does it cash flow today or do I have a clear path to cash flow in the future? Am I buying or building below replacement? And do I have control? Uh, this is, you know, speculating mistakes, waiting for the perfect property, finding, um, I, I'm not going to go into this. This is something that I think is useful to share and the definitions. Yeah. So this is David Stein. So I'm not sure if, if I got the, uh, other information from him or not, but <clears throat> these are his definitions. So the first is investing, right? 
And the definition that he has for investing is the reasonable expectation of a positive return in the future. Uh, and I actually, this came from Dr. Kingsley Jones. Okay. Uh, speculating opportunities where the investment outcome is highly uncertain. And to me, this is, I would say, pre-construction um, when you're just buying, like I put in Bitcoin, commodities, gold, currency, because really at the end of the day, it's a simple game of skill, right? You're betting on values will rise. Gambling opportunities that have a greater likelihood of losing money. Uh, so you can kind of determine for yourself what that would be. Commercial real estate investing tactic. Uh, we're not going to go into that. Actions and next steps. Okay, so... What I would say is if you are kind of new to the world of commercial real estate, one of the biggest things would be to really just understand the language of commercial real estate. You know, understand what NOI, cap rate, D DCR or, uh, you know, DCRS. And these terms will allow you to have good conversations with brokers, lenders, sellers, and uh, I think... Yeah, I'm, I'm confident that this, I've got like the 20 most uh, popular or most used terms on my website that you can download. And then I think if you go to like Investopedia or something, you can, um, you can research those. Uh, the next step would be to fill out your one page plan, right? So I'm just going to list this here. So if you're, you can rewind this or you can look at it. So what type of investor are you, right? Are you make money, grow money, keep money? Uh, what asset class, multi, industrial, retail, office, self-storage, picking your location, right? Which uh, market do you want to be in? Uh, how big of a, of a prop property are you going to invest in? The size of deal, the number of doors, the equity, yours, others, uh, how much debt? And then last is deal structure. Are you going to go solo or are you going to have uh, partners? Uh, this is the one I'll... I'll um, kind of give you a framework for achieving this plan, right? So we've talked about the goal going from point A to point B. Next is the objective, which is essentially sub goals to support your main goal, right? I would consider those to be kind of like 90 day sprints. Then you've got a strategy, right? Like what is the strategy? How are you actually gonna find brokers? Who, where, why, why would they talk to you? Uh, and then prioritizing. So, okay, this is the most important thing. This is the next most important thing. This is actually where I find uh, even myself struggling. And that's why it's nice to have someone on the outside to kind of question you on that. And then what are the actions that you're going to take, right? Like I like to create habits so that I don't have to think about it. I just do it every day uh, or every week. So this is the gospel. I think I got this from, um, uh, what's his name? John Asraf. So goal, objective, strategy, priorities, actions. Right. And so here's an example. Right. So the goal, have a clear marketing and sales process to attract one residential development site in the next 30 days. What's the strategy? Direct outreach to owners and brokers. Tactic. Look at where my competitors are building. Timeline. Four weeks to have a full funnel. Three communities to focus on, you know, and uh, and then, you know, block it out in my calendar. This is just an example. In terms of the uh, homework and tools, I would say like, you know, if you want, go to my website, shanemalanson.com, go on the resources, uh, figure out, you know, get, get that one page investing plan, uh, download the terminology worksheets, and uh, and then just kind of map out, you know, like I said, the, uh, the gospel, right? What's your goal? What's your objective? What's the strategy? What are your priorities? And what's your action plan? And um, that's it. So hopefully that was helpful. I know I kind of breezed through it. Generally, that takes about 90 minutes to go through uh, when I am uh, working with clients. But uh, I thought that I would just run through that with you. And obviously, you can rewind it and, uh, and listen to it again. So hopefully, that's helpful. If you have questions, uh, I would say the best place is just go on LinkedIn and uh, add me as a contact or follow me and then send me a message. And if I get enough questions, then I'll answer them in future uh, videos. So that's it. Have a great week. Bye for now.